Hi everybody, my name is Mr. Francie and welcome or welcome back to Mr. Francie Reads. We are going to do a reading vlog today because uh, it's been a while since I've checked in. <laughs> so uh, lots to talk about. So let's get right to the intro and then get on into it right after that. As I say, welcome or welcome back to Mr. Francie Reads. Let's go. <music> Yes, hello and welcome back to Mr. Francie Reads. I'm so honoured that you have chosen to join me today for a, a reading vlog update. All right, before we go any further, a couple of quick announcements. First of all, I have scheduled to do a number of cosy author pen name videos this month and... Here's a little bit of a surprise. We even have another Celebrating Booktubers video that is not too far away. Uh, the reason for this uh, is because I'm hoping uh, with the Cozy Up, uh, Cozy Author pen name videos is because I'm hoping to have them finished by the end of the month or well, at least up to date with the first 27 authors that I promised for the first season of that series because in July I'm doing my favourites and non-favourites for the first half of the year which I'm incredibly excited about. All right, now let's go through some reading sprint schedules. On Mondays at 7pm, we are either at Stormy's channel, which is Storm Reads, or Lee's channel, Dark Roots Creations, that is 7pm Eastern. On uh, Tuesdays, we're at my Discord at 6pm Eastern. Whole lot of fun over there. It's a, like an audio sprint. Whole lot of fun. Now, on Wednesdays, we're usually at Tiffany's channel, The Beach Farm Bookworm at 6pm Eastern. I don't know if Tiffany is going to be hosting this week or not, so feel free to check that out and you'll get updates on my Discord. If Tiffany is not hosting this week, then we will be at my Discord at 6pm. Then on uh, Thursday, Friday and Sunday, 6pm Eastern, we're again at my Discord. And then on Sunday, we're over at the Killing Time with Cozy's Discord, where Cozy Row hosts the 24-hour Sunday Book Club uh, readathon, where from midnight to midnight on Sunday Eastern Time, anyone can come in at any time and sprint and all that, and it is a whole lot of fun. All right, let's jump right into this reading vlog. But before we go any further, if you have not already, please do subscribe to my video. Every single subscription does go a long way to helping me with my channel. And hit that notification bell, ding, so that you can be notified each and every time I do upload a video. I love doing reading vlogs because it gives me more time to discuss the books with you all in greater detail. Where we left off, uh, I was reading, I was in the middle of Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. And I had struggled at the beginning. It took me a little while to feel grounded and centered in this world. But, um, I have to say, things did improve after that. And I spoke about that in last week's reading vlog. And it just got better and better as uh, time went on for me with this book. And I ended up giving it five stars. So the basic premise of this book, I this is what I'm going to call it. I'm going to call this book a fictional memoir. Now, what do I mean by that? So, like with a non-fiction memoir where we have someone who wrote a book about certain moments and points in their life, this is that, but for a fictional character rather than non-fictional ones. So, we have certain sections within the book where we start off following Jane Eyre, our titular character, uh, from... Uh, a small child and then she goes through certain things uh little certain events i guess you would say as she continues to grow up and uh get older and things like that and uh yeah it's very interesting very intriguing what can i tell you jane uh, at the beginning of the book starts off being treated horribly she is being raised in a home where no one really likes her no one really respects her at all and uh, because it is set in the past because this is a an adult classic by the way uh jane is treated uh rather unfairly because of course the rights of women back in those days were very different so jane as a girl if she puts even a toe out of line for 
things that girls or women can't do, then of course she's reprimanded for it. And that was tough for me to read. I'm a massive feminist, so that wasn't easy. But uh, she ends up leaving uh, that home and ends up becoming a governess for a girl that uh, a man by the name of Rochester has adopted. And yeah, things become quite interesting from there on. And we have some very intriguing discussions that take place, especially between Jane and Rochester. Now, something ends up happening along the way where Jane does need to leave Rochester. She ends up, uh, yeah, going through a myriad of things that I won't say because it's a spoiler. And she uh, ends up uh, with this guy whose name is uh, either Sinjin or St. John. It really just depends on who's saying his name. And uh, she goes through a number of trials with him as well. And there's just a lot of different things that do go on. Now, uh, this book is critically known for being central to the uh, beginnings of feminism, which I do appreciate. One thing that I have to say, though, if you go into this book uh, thinking of it as a pro-feminism book, is that it's more Jane Eyre's thoughts that she has that are feminism thoughts. She doesn't often express these thoughts, they're more internal, so please do know that it's not really a feminist book in the way of that Jane is seeking to try and change things, it's more the thoughts that she has that, uh, I guess back in the day when it was published, kind of triggered thoughts in women and those who uh, believe in the rights of women to you know, think outside of the box of how the situation was back in those days. But uh, as for the book itself, just on its own, the plot and the characters and all that, I really, really enjoyed this book, aside from that very first section. And yeah, gave it an overwhelming five stars. I do highly recommend it. It was fantastic. Highly, highly, highly recommend. Five stars from me. The next book that I picked up uh, wa won't surprise you, thanks to the author, but what may surprise you if you know me and you followed me for long enough is that it's the first of his books that I've picked up this year, and can you believe it's taken till June for me to do so? I certainly can't. And that is my dear, 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 Mr. Brando Sando. And his third book in his YA sci-fi uh, series, which is the uh, Skyward series. So book number three is sci Tonic. This is the latest work in that series. Uh, I don't know if book four is coming out, but this definitely did not feel like an ending So uh, by the time I got to the end of the book, so I'm assuming that another one is coming out. It is a YA sci-fi, and I end up giving this book 3.5 stars. The Skyward series is that we're following a... A teenager, I think she's a teenager when we begin, whose name is Spencer, uh, and that is spelled S-P-E-N-S-A, so not S-P-E-N-C-E-R that you'll pronounce Spencer if you're American, but Spencer with an S-A. <laughs> so just to avoid any confusion there. So Spencer, in the prologue of the very first book, Skyward, she is uh, flying around with her father in his spaceship. It's a sci-fi, so this book is set in outer space, basically and uh, unfortunately her father ends up being killed and yeah so that's very tough for Spencer because she was being raised uh, just by him her mother's not there I think her mother had died before then but I don't remember but yeah he was a single father and now he's he's dead and she wants to follow on in his footsteps he was a fighter for uh, their community uh, that, that are battling an alien race known as the Krell so Spencer ends up joining the academy, I guess, whatever you want to call it, it to go into training to be able to join uh, the fighting people. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I really enjoyed the first book. Spencer was treated absolutely horribly because there is a rumour that uh, sparked uh, about her dad and the circumstances that surrounded him dying. Uh, so she is treated terribly. But along the way, she meets two of the most amazing side characters that I've ever met, an artificial, in, uh, artificially intelligent uh, being known as Mbot, who I just absolutely love, and an adorable slug. I never thought I'd say the words adorable slug in a sentence, but uh, his name is Dune Slug, and Dune Slug is just so gorgeous. If you've read the series, you know what I'm referring to. Oh my gosh. Anyway, uh, so... I really loved book one in this series. Book number two I struggled with because I felt like there was way too much thrown at me at once. I felt like book number one was kind of that 
perfect just right amount of things that were thrown at me but book number two there was just it was overwhelming to read there were so many characters and so many different things that we were dealing with the world building if you will despite the fact that it's a sci-fi I'm sure you know what I mean the world building was just yeah it was just way too much this book was kind of the opposite to book number two. There was not enough going on for me in this book. I ended up giving this book 3.5 stars, and the reason for that is because for the longest time when, while I was thinking about what I was going to rate this book, I kept coming back to just one specific pro, which was it's an easy read. But a book being an easy read with not a lot of other pros attached to it does not a five-star book make for me. So it's convenient, but that does not necessarily make it an amazing book that I'm going to give five stars to. With this one, Spencer has, I guess, crash-landed into a another world, and she's lost, and she's trying to find her way home. One thing that I definitely don't like in books is the traveling slash questing trope, where you don't know where you're going to, and you don't know how you're going to get there, and this felt very, very reminiscent of that trope. The good news is that I can now cross this series off on my SAS list, because I did have it on my SAS list series about series list, so... Yay, another series being crossed off. But um, I'm interested to see how things are going to go in book four. The way that things wrapped up in this book does have me intrigued because Spencer ended up uh, making her way somewhere. I'm not going to say where. <laughs> and um, yeah, so that has me intrigued to see how things are going to go moving forward because I feel like book number four is going to be a lot more action-packed than this one was. So the next book that I picked up was another book on my SAS list. In fact, all of the remaining books, obviously including the um, Cytonic, uh, were on my SAS list. So uh, I'm really trying to make great progress and great strides towards uh, trying to complete the books that are on that list, especially considering we are getting towards halfway through the year. So the next book that I picked up was this book, Confessions of a Shopaholic by Sophie uh, Kinsella. This is the uh, uh, Shopaholic series, and the Shopaholic, this is book one in the Shopaholic series, and the Shopaholic series is the only romance series that is on my SAS list for 2022. Last year I read I've Got Your Number by Sophie Kinsella, and I just found that to be absolutely hilarious. Unfortunately, this book did not leave me in a, with a, in a particularly good humour, I have to say. So the basic premise of this book, and by the way, it is an adult romance, the basic premise of this book is that we're following a woman by the name of Becky, of Rebecca, whose nickname is Becky, and the book opens up with Becky being in credit card debt. In fact, uh, the book uh, has a number of different um, credit card debt receipts and letters that she gets from the companies and all that uh, littered throughout the book, which I did appreciate. But what I did not appreciate was the character of Becky. She starts off, as I say, in credit card debt with multiple credit cards. And uh, Becky kind of starts off by ignoring the debt and just saying to herself uh, things that... I didn't quite understand, but she was basically saying, oh, if I shove it into a drawer, then uh, it's, you know, shrouded in darkness and I don't have to think about it anymore, so moving on, and uh, yeah, I didn't quite understand that. But then we get um, a little bit further on into the book, let's say by the time we get to the end of the first quarter, and uh, Becky is starting to become a lot more serious in her mind, <laughs> become a lot more serious about trying to, um, you know, pay off the debts that she has on these multiple credit cards, but... She struggles to do so, and um, the reasons that she struggles to pay off the credit card debt just didn't really work for me. The character of Becky is incredibly ditzy, but not to the point that I find it funny, to the point that it was just really annoying me. Becky is in uh, credit card debt because she is a shopaholic. Every time she goes uh, shopping, she has to buy things, she's a compulsive buyer, so that's led us to where we're at um, at the beginning of the book. So Becky, uh, a quarter of the way through the book, decides, okay, that's it, I'm going to take a serious approach, I'm going to start saving money, and I'm going to uh, start... Uh, you know, paying uh, off these debts. To give you an example of something that does not occur in the book, but to give you an idea of what I was going through reading this, Becky would go into, let's say, a cooking homeware type store where they would have a sale where if you buy two mixing bowls, you get a wooden spoon for free. And Becky's reaction was, well, so of course I need to buy these two mixing bowls because how else would I get this free wooden spoon? What an amazing deal this is. And 
if this was the example, uh, if this example was in the book, then let's say Becky doesn't cook. So she's thinking, this is an amazing sale for me because I can get a free wooden spoon despite the fact that I don't cook and would never use these products. And be really surprised at how much she had spent that day. And it just really annoyed me. Her rationale for why she needed, quote unquote, to buy things just didn't make any sense to me. And so... The attempt at the humour that came about because of this ditzy character who is trying to justify why she needs things despite the fact that she definitely does not just really let me down and uh, the humour definitely did not land for me. Fortunately, uh, when we get to the three quarter mark, Becky finally seems to be a little bit more switched on and some things occur that uh, get her to this point and I really appreciated the way that things wrapped up. Because of that, I end up giving this book 3.5 stars, but it is absolutely, the majority of the reason for that is because of the final quarter. The final quarter was fantastic, and I feel like it has set me up for book number two, as I say, I'm going to read it next week, Shopaholic Abroad. Sophie Kinsella, please tell me that Becky is not as ditzy in book number two, because I want more of your fabulous humour, and it just didn't land for me. 3.5 stars overall. So, after the disappointment of that book and the disappointment with Cytonic, I had to pick up a cosy, so I didn't break my TBR, but I broke the order with which I said I was going to read the books in my TBR, and I picked up this book, A Baker's Coven, which is book number three in the Spelford Cove. I don't know if you can see that, Spelford Cove Mystery Series. I love this series so much. Book number one is right up there. <laughs> it is called The Witching Flower, uh, and I think I gave that book four stars, and then I read Double Double Tartan Trouble, book number two. I gave that four stars, and I'm giving A Baker's Coven four stars as well. And let me explain why. One thing that this series has in common that is a con, I have so many pros for the series, so I'm going to start with the con, is... I don't really like the reveals of the mysteries, and in some of the books, this one it was okay, but in some of the books I just felt a little let down by the mysteries in general. The cosy side of this series, however, is fantastic, and that is why, despite docking a star for the mysteries in the other two as well as this one, it still receives an overwhelmingly good rating of four stars from me. So the basic setup for this series is that we're following a girl by, uh, sorry, a woman by the name of Robin. It's an adult cozy mystery. Uh, and in book one, Robin receives a letter to let her know that her biological mother has passed away. Uh, when Robin was quite young, she was uh, taken to an orphanage and she was adopted out by these parents that, according to Robin, were so extremely loving and they raised her so well. She has a lot of love for them. Unfortunately, the adoptive parents are not around anymore, but um, she does not at all regret having been adopted out because she had a very loving adopted adoptive family. But yeah, she receives a letter to let her know that her blood mother, who she had never met before, well, or had only met as a baby, but but, you know, does that count, uh, has died, and that she has bequeathed Robin her bakery in Spelford Cove. So Robin needs to go down and check out uh, what's going on with the bakery and see if she wants to keep it or sell it or whatever. She's received this letter from her aunt who has asked her to come on over while she's in town just to meet the family and kind of go from there, and um, Robin ends up doing that. Along the way, Robin ends up finding out that there is more to her than meets the eye. She is a witch, but not only is she a witch, she is a kitchen witch, and what that means is that she has the magical ability to inject certain magic into her cooking to give the food that everyone is eating a desired effect. Robin's powers continue to grow over the course of time, and uh, in this third book, Robin meets her father. Well, she met her father towards the end of the second one, and uh, things are going down because of that, because her father is extremely powerful, and he has some motives to do some certain things that Robin doesn't really agree with, so that causes a bit of drama, but um, Robin absolutely loves her aunt as well as her two cousins, all of which are witches as well. Her, she has a, a quirky, crazy, and yet lovable grandmother, who I forgot her name, but we love her too. <laughs> um, and yeah, in this one, 
uh, Robin's uh, cousin, I don't remember her name, I think it's Ella or something, she works at a nature hiking reserve place and her co-worker uh, has died because uh, everyone feels that she accidentally fell from a high area. So Robin and her cousins uh, end up getting on the case to try and work out to try and work out who killed this person. Now, I thought the mystery was okay. What let me down was the reveal. Honestly, um, I read this book over the course of two and a bit days. I, I want to say three, but honestly, in the third day, I still only had like half an hour left of the audiobook, so it was two and a bit <laughs> days. And uh, when the reveal was made as to who the killer was, my reaction was, who? I'm sorry, who are you? And that's not what you want to have in a mystery to go, who is this? <laughs> so that did let me down. But everything else I did love about it. And this book also had a scene that uh, was a side scene, but I really appreciated that featured my favorite animal, which is the orca, the killer whale. And I loved it. Although, found out something interesting in this book. Don't know if it's true or not, but according to the guide who was showing Robin the um, orca whales, uh, he he was saying they're not actually whales that is a misconception they're actually part of the dolphin family so there you go look i loved it overall four stars from me my only gripe is that i spend way too long between reading each book so far in the series that is not going to continue to happen next month i'm going to read book four the month after book five the month after book six and the month after i'll wrap it up reading book seven so i want to read them a lot closer together and that's what i'm going to do four stars from me so now let's turn towards the book that I'm currently reading, and this is from a series that I am absolutely loving. It is not a cozy series, but uh, it has just been so amazing so far, and it is the Legend series by Mari Lu. I read book one and book two and gave them both five stars, and I'm currently reading book number three, which is Champion. I am currently there which is uh, 92 pages in, and this book has been, so far at least, just as amazing as the first two. I I cannot speak highly enough about the series, and I think um, that uh, my rating definitely proves that with book one and two receiving five stars, and so far this one being a five-star read as well. The basic premise of this series, the Legend series, is that we are, it's a dual perspective. We follow two different characters, which is June and Day. At the beginning of book number one, Legend, we find out that we're in this dystopian world, the um, uh, age rating and genre is YA dystopian, we're in a dystopian world and uh, children when they get to a certain age, I think it's like nine or something, have to take this very incredibly uh, life determiningly important aptitude test. And depending upon the results that they receive is going to determine their future. Do well and you will receive a ton of scholarships which will give you advantages to education and uh, to good education and great jobs and, and good wealth and things like that. But do poorly and you may not even be allowed to go to school so you may just become homeless or and not have an income and things like that. So this test is incredibly important. What uh what Mari Lu does so incredibly well with the series is many things, but one of them is that the two characters that we follow uh, for the dual perspective are on different ends of the spectrum when it came to this test. June has scored the highest score ever in history, while Day received the lowest score ever in history. So we get to follow two completely different characters who have had two completely different experiences because June got to uh, live her life in the higher echelon of classes because of her score, while Day could not have been in a lower class. So, uh, yeah, so it's very, very interesting. So I really do love this series, and uh, where I've left off, we have just had an incredibly important scene with June. I don't want to give anything away, but I will just say this, which is not a spoiler. I'll, I'll just say this. Have you ever had those moments where you're watching a TV show or a film or reading a book or whatever, and you see something play out from one character's perspective, and then at the end of that scene, they walk away to do whatever the next thing is, and then much later on, we get to see this scene play out again from another character's perspective, but the scene continues on from after that uh, first character that we followed left the scene, and other things happen that we don't know. That's what we had. So... 
this scene that I'm referring to took place in book number one and was including our um, male main character, which is Day, and something interesting happened there and we're following him because he's trying to deal with something. And yet what we don't know is when he walked away, something else incredibly important was going on that was going to end up ultimately affecting June. Uh, it didn't it didn't involve June at the time, but it ultimately ended up affecting her. So what's happened is we've now had the opportunity to go back and revisit that scene through the eyes of this person who has this integral information for her. And that was just so fantastic to listen to. It was, uh, yeah, just wow. Now we have this key bit of information that we didn't even know links back to what Dave was doing in book one. And I just absolutely loved that. I think there are like four or five something like that, books in the series, and I just can't praise it highly enough. All right, let's quickly jump over and talk about what I'm planning on reading for the rest of the week. So obviously I plan on finishing Champion by Mari Lu, uh, and yeah, really looking forward to getting right back to this book. <laughs> After that, I'm going to pick up the second book in the Shopaholic series, so Shopaholic Abroad, and yeah, looking forward to seeing what Sophie Kinsella does with book two. Please, please, please don't have Becky be as ditzy in book two. I would really appreciate it if she's not, so I'll keep you all updated. And then after that, I'm picking up my second buddy read, uh, for the, well, actually, it's not an, it's an unofficial buddy read, actually. So I have two official buddy reads that we're doing this month on the Discord. The first was Jane Eyre. The second one was A Crafty Crime by Erin Scott. I haven't read that one yet, but I'll probably read it in the final week of June because it's a really short, cozy mystery. But this one is an unofficial buddy read. A lot of people did vote for this one, but not enough for it to become official. I still put a channel up on the Discord anyway. And that is the second uh, book in the Silver Six Crafting Mystery Series. I read book number one last month, Basket Case by Nancy Haddock. <laughs> I have to make sure that I'm right here because I was saying Nancy Warren last time. Nancy Haddock. <laughs> and this book really annoyed me. It is apparently a cozy mystery <laughs> uh, that opens up with a mystery directly and we have hardly any cozy at all. It's more like 90% uh, mystery, 10% cozy, which annoyed me. But I am going to continue on because it is a part of my sass list for this year. So book number two is Paint the Town Dead. Paint the Town Dead by Nancy Haddock. Now to everyone's favourite game that we like to call Up, 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 Up. These are the books that I have read since the last time I saw y'all. And Up, 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 Up. These are the books that I'm either currently reading or plan to get through uh, by the end of this coming week. So what books did you read during these last week, week and a half, whatever it's been since we've last uh, spoken in a reading vlog? Let me know in the comment section below. But in the meantime, that is where I am going to leave it, letting you all go with peace, blessings, and so, so, so much love. I post videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, or try to. <laughs> so I'll see you again soon. Mwah. Please do be kind and love one another, and spread your sparkling energy all throughout the world. And until next time, happy reading!